Hi, Patrick Brewer from the Model FA. I want to talk to you about the four ways that you can scale your advisory practice. The word scale has been thrown around a lot in the past couple months in our industry. It's definitely a buzzword. I want to unpack it a little bit, and then I want to talk to you about the four ways that you can use scale in order to build a business that produces a better lifestyle for you, more income, more revenue, just overall, probably just a better life in general. Uh, what is scale? It's really just leverage. It's figuring out a way to better leverage and productize yourself uh, or your time so that you don't have to be the one running around doing everything. So it basically removes you from different processes inside of the company so you can just do less, which ultimately means more money, more profits, more time, more freedom, all that fun stuff. How do you do that? Well, there's four ways that you can do it. Some are better than others depending on your personality and your goals, but we're gonna examine all four and we'll see maybe which one is appropriate for you or a combination. The first one is to do everything yourself. This is challenging because most advisors don't enjoy all aspects of their business. There's a lot that goes into building an advisory practice. You've got sales, marketing, client experience, operations, finance, office, admin, trading, financial planning, you name it. There's a million different things that happen inside of a firm. There's a very, very slim, if not zero chance that you enjoy all of these things. So if you try and scale on your own by creating all the processes, running the processes, doing the sales, doing the marketing, you're gonna burn out because you have a limited amount of energy in a day. You're gonna be borrowing from your future energy stores in order to get things done in the business and you're ultimately gonna stagnate. You're gonna hate your life, <laughs> frankly. You can do this for a period of time, but it's not an effective long-term solution. The second way you can scale is to outsource. So this is where you're hiring someone like a paraplanning company or um, a TAMP, an outsourced investment manager, or we offer something called the Model FA operating system where we actually kind of bolt in our uh, platform and help you uh, better leverage your time. You basically outsource a core component of your business because you don't enjoy it, you're not getting a lot of value from completing those services, or you wanna move faster in a, in a, in a different area. So generally, investment management, financial planning, that's not really gonna allow you to increase your income or increase profitability by focusing on that service. You're better off focusing on sales, marketing, prospecting, building relationships. So you would outsource that piece of your business. Outsourcing is really just a cost-benefit analysis. Now, the challenge with outsourcing everything is you're basically giving away that margin to other companies. So other companies are gonna to need to run a profit margin because they're trying to scale themselves. So your margin starts to get thinner and thinner as you have these other companies that are providing services for you also generating a profit margin on your behalf or at your expense and however you look at it. So you should selectively outsource, but I'd say doing a full outsource unless it's a really value added service that this person is providing might not lead to an optimal outcome for you long term. I think it's a great short term uh, solution though. The third way you can do this is to insource. This is where you identify the talent, you skill them up, you build the, the SOPs, the standard operating procedures, all the processes, the workflows for each of your different business lines. So you and hopefully your COO or someone on your team is pivoting around the business and figuring out who do you need, who are the directors, who are the associates, you know, who are the planners that are gonna get this work done and how do you build processes around them to hold them accountable and incentivize them to do the work so you can level up and not have to do that work yourself. The benefit of this is you're recapturing that margin. So you're no longer outsourcing it and paying somebody else to worry about the problems. These are now your problems. They're your people. They're your incentive systems. Now, if you're good at running a business, you can make more money doing this. The problem is that you're dealing with more people. So you have more management responsibilities and you have to do more problem solving. It could potentially slow you down and it could derail your business totally if you're not thinking about it the right way. Insourcing is generally preferred for someone who's looking to build an enterprise practice, I would say past about 500 million to a billion dollars in assets. Otherwise, the outsourcing solutions for a lot of these uh, things in our industry are, are pretty solid at this point. Um, you'd probably be better served by outsourcing and focusing on sales, marketing, prospecting, and relationships. The final way to do this is to create a partnership. So a partnership is where you don't outsource, you don't insource, you don't do it yourself, you actually join a firm and they do a lot of the stuff for you because they've already insourced all the talent and they've selectively outsourced whichever pieces don't make sense. You bolt in and you own your business and then you kind of grow that as much as you want, but you don't have to worry about all the human capital responsibilities, you know, scaling infrastructure, doing the marketing, figuring out all that stuff 
that might not be enjoyable to you as a financial advisor. So a lot of it comes down to what do you want out of your business? What do you want out of your life? There's kind of a, a, a trade-off there. You know, how, the more you sacrifice, the more you're gonna get out of your business, right? If you sacrifice short-term gain for long-term benefit, you can afford to hire more people, you can build an enterprise practice, and you'll build more terminal value, and you'll realize that later on. If you'd rather build a cash flow business where you have really deep relationships with your clients and more time with your family, then you're probably gonna lean towards outsourcing or partnership or you know, some model like that. So I would, I would encourage you to think through those four options, the do it yourself, you know, you're a jack of all trades, outsourcing or selectively outsourcing, insourcing and partnership. Those are really your four options. There's no right or wrong. You have to make this decision for yourself, but you wanna constantly evaluate those four options as you grow, because if you don't, you're gonna end up making snap decisions when you're feeling anxious, stressed, or burnt out, and they're not gonna be good long-term decisions for you, and you'll probably end up spending more time and energy unwinding them in the future. If you wanna learn more about this, I suggest you join our Facebook group. I've dropped the link to it below this video. Click it, join, it's free. We'd love to have you in there. It's, it's a community of fiduciary financial advisors that are just trying to get better at their craft, and we're gonna try and drop as much good information as we can for you so that you can grow, scale, and build whatever you're looking to build. See you in there. Hey, did you like this content? There's more where that came from. Go ahead and like and subscribe to the YouTube channel to receive more practice management, marketing, sales tips so that you're gonna be able to accelerate your practice, build a next generation advisory firm, and build the practice that you've always dreamed of. So go ahead and like and subscribe, and I'll talk to you soon. Take care.